Maccabees, Black Maccabees. What are we speaking about? We're speaking about one of the apocryphal books, one of the 15 or so books that were taken out of the, the Bible. We have 66 books, and they are the books of the apocrypha, and they're called pseudepigrapha and these names, but they are some of the missing books from the Bible, which the ancient church, the faith that was once delivered to the ancient Kedusan, the holy ones, the saints, our matriarchs and patriarchs of the Bible, I, this is the half of the story. So I wanted to call this one actually um, Black Maccabees. This is about the, the war. There, there's a warfare. And, and many of us don't recognize how old this war, and, and it's, a, it's a spiritual warfare, right? And uh, many are caught up, caught up unawares. They are unawares of exactly what's what and, and who's who on the face of the planet Earth. I, and this is one reason why we decided to touch on this, especially at this present time in a Hanukkah Tov, right? A Hanukkah, Hanukkah Tov, a, a Melkam Hanukkah, right? A happy Hanukkah to the brothers and the sisters. And now why is Hanukkah important? Well, it's, it's the festival of lights or the true light, right? The true light. So, there's nothing that is hidden that shall not be revealed. And in our growing in the grace of the King of Kings in Christ, we begin to recognize why Rastafari has made um, such a, a emphasis, especially the elders, on the Maccabee Bible and the book of Maccabee. Right? The book of Maccabee. You remember many of I and I elders in the Rastafari, the real Rastafari, um, Ethiopian Hebrew elders, they pointed to the importance of the book of Maccabees. Now, if you've studied the book of Maccabees, even get an overview, it was a, a very important period between the book of Malachi in the Old Testament and the book of uh, the first book of the New Testament, which is called Matthew. So we want to call this the Black Maccabees versus the the Black Boule, <laughs> the Black Boule, or the Greek. So it's the Black Maccabees. We're speaking about Israel, and Israel at that particular pivotal time historically. Now, if we say, well, this is you're talking about the Boule. The Boule is a group since what 1904 or something around them parts and this is all very very so very interesting i pray for for the grace and the boldness to be able to clear this message and i also pray that ones that those who have an ear to hear will hear what the spirit the spirit of truth and the true light is enlightening us and saying to the churches because we know from ecclesiastes it says the thing that hath been it is that which shall be and that which is done is that which shall be done. And there is no new thing under the sun. Is there anything whereof it may be said, see, this is new. It hath been already of old time, which was before us. So this has already been. So, you know, the things under the sun, is there anything new? Right? Is there anything new? Right? That's why verse 11, and this is Ecclesiastes or the preacher, the book of Ecclesiastes, right? Called the preacher, which says in verse 11, chapter 1, verse 11, there is no remembrance of former things, neither shall there be any remembrance of things that are to come with those that shall come after. Now, why am I mentioning this right here? Because the theme here, right, is the, you know, the trans, the, the transitoriness of things, you know, the changeableness of things. But then there's a, a sameness of these things. As it says, one generation passed away and another generation cometh, but the earth abided forever. So you find in ancient archaeology, you know, they'll find things from past uh, times and civilizations and 
sometimes when we study these things, we begin to recognize, you know, how how similar, right, is the so-called uh, human condition. And sometimes even much of what was then is what's going on now, right? So this spiritual warfare and, and, and the book of Maccabees speak of the Maccabean period, this Maccabean period. And we need to put some of the context, you know, some of the the substance of this into context. And, and this is kind of a big issue right here. So some might be able to get it um, easier than others. Others might think, what the, you know, what's he talking about? The Black Maccabees. Who's, who's the Black Maccabees? Because they don't know the book of Maccabees. But when you recognize the book of Maccabees, right, then this word picture that we're putting before you will become very much more, more evident. And now, um, this time of uh, this abomination of desolation. Remember Yeshua HaMoshe, he spoke about this abomination of desolation and says, he who readeth it, let him who readeth it understand what he's reading. So people have read that in the New Testament, but really don't understand what they are reading. So they many have fallen away in, the, in this lukewarm time in, this, in these latter days. And we can see the black church. They, they say two of the most uh, strongest influences in America is the, is the black woman and the black church. Very, very, very interesting, right? But now when we look in BC 168, Antiochus offered a sow, which is a pig, upon the great altar and erected an altar to Jupiter in, in the holy place, you know, the abomination, desolation. In other words, that which was what was sacred to the power, to, to the power of Israel or the God of Israel, right? The God of we and our ancestors, so-called once lost but now found Beta Israel, we the, the 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 black sheep of the house of Israel, we Ethiopian Hebrews, and by extension to our black Hebrew and and Hebrew Israelite brothers and sisters. Let's look at this book called Maccabees, and we'll see very clearly this war between those who wanted to hold to the covenant, the Al Kidan, this covenant. And it's symbolized in Judas Maccabeus, who was the head of that particular family, who took, who took up, who took up a, a, a warfare against those who were selling out the covenant, those Negroes who are selling the, who, who have sold out black folks. And there's a very interesting video where some of the people in Ferguson, protesters down there, find Jesse, uh, Messy Jesse, Jesse Jackson, and they confront him straight up face to face why why you keep selling out black people and remember the may John bless his soul and rest his soul in peace Steve Coakley who really exposed you know the so-called uh black boule or the black Greeks and this is not to condemn everyone who have who, who might you might find yourself there you know what I mean you know um still you, you you have to come out of Babylon come out of this confusion but this desolation which is spoken of in Daniel chapter 8, verse 13, is a type of what's called the final abomination of desolation. So we talk about the last days, right? In these last days, remember it's called the times of uh, Yaakov's, right? The time of Yaakov's or Jacob's troubles, right? The time of Jacob's troubles. So what are we speaking about here? Now, you have to keep in mind COINTELPRO. I just put in that out there, the COINTELPRO, the 60s, Right. And how many of the misleaders of the 60s, right, denied almost like, in a sense, Peter denied these hard headed. They denied the black Messiah. Right. And then the 40 years, this is like 40 years later. And we, we're kind of connecting this with the assassination of Malcolm X, which is coming up, I think, towards the 40th year, either this year or the or the year thereafter. We'll check on that. But there's this final abomination of desolation that Matthew 24 and 15 speaks on. Now, the temple worship was forbidden. And it was the true worship for us as the black sheep of the house of Israel, as Ethiopian Hebrews in this land, which is not our own, is forbidden. And the people were compelled to eat swine's flesh. Right? Because some of the Hebrews no longer want to be Hebrews. So they... They, they shaved their precepts, their faces, their beards. They they undid, I don't know how they did this. I guess got to investigate the, the circumcision. They undid the circumcision. They went to the gymnasium, the gyms, 
and, and, and participated in a lot of abomination, homosexual acts like the Greeks. They basically sold out their culture to follow in the way of the Greeks. This is what happened in that period of time that led to the Maccabean War, or this time of that the book of Maccabees um, speaks and bespeaks to. So the Rastafari elders reminded us from the very from the very Bejameria, you know, from the very beginning, right, of the revelation of the King of Kings, Kedamawi Hala Selassie, Christ's kingly character, of the book of Maccabees and the Maccabean Bible, right, that was given to black men or to the, the, the black sheep of the house of Israel or true Israel, to we, the children of the Ethiopians and the children of Israel. So, this connects with us right here because the excesses of this one called Antiochus, it provoked the revolt of the Maccabees. Now, the word Maccabee actually means a hammer. Now, it's connected at its very core with the, with the season, this season right now, which is beginning the 15th of December, right? This is the evening and the morning of the 16th, the beginning of the 16th, but the evening is what in the Gentiles call. So you have to come out that Gentile state of mind, but one step at a time. So what we're saying right here is that when we look at this war, right, of the Maccabees versus the the Hellenists, they call them Hellenists. It's another name of Greek. Now, you know, when ones go Greek, you know what Greek is a euphemism for. But all of these abominable acts took place as many of the black Hebrews, like a lot of the Negro black leaders and others, sold themselves out to be Greek and to live in the what? The image, right, of the beast. And that's what you see right there. I mean, really some, this this here has a, a female head and there's an urn, you know, and the urn is the ashes and, and, and this is the, the Greek so-called sphinx, right? Or maybe you say the Greek sphincter, if you over. But anyway, the excesses of Antiochus provoked the revolt of the Maccabees, one of the most historic pages of history. Now I'm reading from the Schofield um, page 985, and it, it, there's a brief write-up here where it says, from Malachi to Matthew. And if you've read it, it's very important to read that, because it really connects this period of time, and then the apocryphal books go, and the book of Maccabees go into more detail. Matha, um, 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 Matathias, Matathias, right, the first of the Maccabees was the priest of great sanctity, and energy of character, he began off the revolt. So the revolt began from a one called Matathias, right? He was the first of the Maccabees. Now, Maccabee mean hammer, the hammer. Now, that connects also with Jeremiah. Jeremiah speaks, right? Jeremiah speaks and bespeaks of, of the hammer, right? The hammer as a, a, as a symbol. That's what Maccabee actually means. It means a hammer. Right, it reminds me of the Bob Marley. I think Bob Marley and the Whalers, they, they have a song that has a, a theme of the ham. I don't recall it in its detail right now, but hopefully a brother or sister can, you know, put forward a report to, to kind of tag up on that, you know, or something on Rastafari Groundation. But the word hammer, let me just find this right here in Jeremiah. Now, Jeremiah is interesting because we have the Ethiopian there too, Ebed Malek. Right, that Ethiopian connection. Here we go. Jeremiah 20, 23 and 29, where it says, Is not my word like as a fire? Now remember, this is also connected with, with Hanukkah, right? With Hanukkah, right? The Maccabean period right here connected with Hanukkah. And that one day's worth of uh, oil, right? Of oil and the oil, the anointing, the fire, the light to see the, the um, word picture of our Abba Father, uh, that one day's worth going for eight days. And now we're in the eighth millennium, right? Is not my word like as a fire, saith Yahweh, saith the sustainer Egeziavihir, saith the sustainer Yahweh, he who be who he be, Zaivad, Matsi, Kedamawi, Haile Selassie, and like a hammer, his word, the word of the king of kings, the word of the king that breaketh the rock in pieces, right? That breaketh the rock in pieces. This is Jeremiah 23, verse 29. But then he says in verse 30, he says, Therefore, behold, I am against the prophets, 
right? And you know, this is very, this is, this is a title that is used to great act excess, right? Great excess among those uh, black, Greek and popular um, um, churches. And many of them also part of this uh, same uh, conspiracy against his divine majesty. It says, therefore, behold, I am against the prophets, saith Yahweh, that steal my words, every one from his neighbor. Now, here's how this connects with the civil rights, Martin Luther for King Jr. and all of that. You know, some are going to be offended, but the truth is an offense. Right? You need to know this before the day is up. Behold, I am against the prophets, saith Yahweh, that use their tongues and say, he saith. Now, you can see this a lot in the so-called black church, in the so-called Negro church. Remember, the two most important, powerful forces, as Dick Gregory um, says, right, and has said for years, and it's true, is the black woman and the church. And we know that in Scripture, in the Hebrew, in the Hebraicism, to show that it's our people, the Hebrews, right, the idea of church and woman is connected. We have that in the Gospels in the New Testament. So we can see it's Ethiopian or it's black or um, for lack of a better terminology, it's African roots. Behold, I am against the prophets, saith Yahweh, that use their tongues and say, he saith, the Lord saith, and the Lord, Reverend Bacon and past the pork chop, who no doubt is also part of this um, conspiracy, right, against his majesty. Behold, look and see, I am against that prophecy, I, I'm against them that prophesy false dreams. I have a dream. I have a dream. Is it Jacob's dream? Is it Jacob's vision? No, it's these false dreams, saith Yahweh, and do tell them and cause my people to err, to error, this error of the past 400, well, actually of the past 40 years, the number 440 and 400 is very interesting. We're coming up to another 40 year in the um, anniversary of the assassination of, um, of, of, of Malik al-Hajj al-Shabazz or more better known as Malcolm X. But here we're more speaking of MLK, right? And that um, black boule conspiracy there, right? And do tell them, tell what the dreams. And we learned that this dream that King had and it was on the CNN program, my CI and I, video, we had a video that we put up there, not going into all the details, but basically it wasn't even his dream. We have a, a DVD on that. Need to really get into that a little bit more in detail, but it wasn't his dream. I mean, we were so shocked that we couldn't really even get beyond just that fact right there. Cause we thought that that was so significant a fact that ones knew, but they suppressed. So what they do, they did what Yahweh says that they would do, right? They do tell their, their false dreams and cause my people the so-called lost sheep, the Negro people, the black people wandering in this around this same old mountain of civil rights, just like the Israelites in the wilderness. They wandered around the same old mountain for how many years? For 40 years. What did Robert Kennedy, RFK said? He said in 40 years, blacks will have a president. Mm. Is this planning or there's nothing new under the sun as Ecclesiastes basically says to us, right? And says, it says, and do tell them and cause my people to err by their lies. And, and you know, lies now are so, even the politician, the media and people just in the, it's just lies, lies, lies. But where did this begin? How did the black community, the black family go from a nuclear family to an implosion, right? A nuclear meltdown over the past 40 years because of these false prophets, Right, who caused the people who thought they were the talented tenth, right, and then they caused the dumb, deaf, and blind, the eighty-five, right, to err by their lies and by their lightness, right. Yet I sent them not. Yahweh says, John says he didn't send them nor command them. Therefore, they shall not profit this people at all. Saith Yahweh, saith Jah, Rastafari, have they profited this people? They talk about the black Messiah, the black Messiah, the black Messiah. And no one in that that generation, that age, who had the legitimate claims was not mentioned, almost none at all, by any of them, the so-called 60s black misleaders, 
right? The one that got closest probably was MLK. I mean, not MLK, excuse me, not him. Well, he got close, but he maybe he was going to change. Maybe because they were fighting against him. And we know that conspiracy amongst his, he was wounded in the house of his friends. But they used, right? But they used what he said. You know, on that in D.C., which is the spiritual Egypt, that's why the obelisk is there, which is the spiritual Egypt, right? They used that for 40 years, right? And it says, and when this people or the prophet or a priest shall ask thee, saying, what is the burden of Yahweh? There's that the Steve Copley thing about Jesse, Messy Jesse, where he's saying in that interview on N uh, NBC, He's saying, oh, how king that last night at the Masonic Lodge, right? And his majesty didn't dibble-dabble with the Masons. You, you know, people lie. They, they, they just lie and defame and slander the king of kings. Because they have to keep, keep your eye off the prize, right? And offer a fake substitute. That's why the people have been wandering around the mountain. Things are getting worse and worse as they pursue this false dream. What is the burden of Yahweh? Thou shalt say to them, what burden? I will even forsake you, saith Yahweh, saith the king of kings. And as for the prophet and the priest and the people that shall say the burden of Yahweh, I will even punish that man and his and his house. Now, if you scroll forward, I want, actually, is this a chapter that is in where it talks about, it talks about the dream. Yeah, let's go to 25, verse 25, Jeremiah 23, 25. Right, because now we just make the connection with the hammer, right? And the boule is really Baal, Baal, and Balaam. Baal and Balaam is the boule, right? Within the scriptural matrix, the Hebrew code, the black Hebrew code, that's who they are. So if you approach it from that perspective, you'll see the victory, the overcoming, right? The overcoming. So here it says, I have heard what the prophet said that prophesied lies in my name. The, the pastors and the preachers, many of them now who we learn were and are part of this, 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 this boule, this, this um, black Greek thing. And they want to be like skull and bones and, and like the so-called in the image of the beast or, or those who crucified our Lord. This is why I said our Lord was crucified in the city that's known spiritually as Sodom and Egypt. But get this. It says, I've heard what the prophet said. You know, a lot of nigger preachers love that terminology, prophet. Everybody's a prophet and prophetess. I have heard what the prophet said that prophesied lies in my name. It's in the name of God, God said, right? Saying, I have dreamed, I have dreamed. Boom. Jeremiah 23, verse 25. Here it is. If you read this chapter and pray for wisdom and his Holy Spirit and light, Right, you will see this in reality, and yes, it's going to be shocking. Yes, it's going to be, you know, devastating to what you have been made and the make believe. Right, but it says, "Ye shall know the truth, and the truth shall set you free." And it goes on and says, "How long shall this be in the heart of the prophets that prophesy lies?" It's already more than forty years, and they're still lying to the people. Right. By silver rights, by silver rights. Yea, they are prophets of the deceit of their own heart. That's why they, they don't really quote or teach the scriptures. If you notice that, they don't teach the scriptures or the law, statutes, commandments, or what Yeshua fulfilled in truth, right? Or who the people are, right? They say you just, uh, you just two continent, the African American, right? Which think to cause my people to forget my name by their dreams which they tell every man to his neighbor, as their fathers have forgotten my name for Baal, for Baal. They've forgotten, right, the lion of the tribe of Judah, right? They've forgotten the lion of the tribe of Judah for Baal, for the boule, Baal, 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 Bole, Bali, right? The prophet that hath a dream, let him tell a dream. To those who want to keep on going on with that deception. But it says, and he that hath my word, let him speak my word faithfully. What is the chaff to the wheat? Saith Yahweh. Is not my word like as a fire? Fire. That's why when I say fire, Maccabees put it together. His majesty says, for my part, I glory in the Bible. This is the glory of the king of kings. 
is not my word like as a fire, saith Yahweh, saith Jah, or Astafari, and like a hammer that breaketh the rock in pieces, right? And the Rockefeller, need we go into that? You need to check out Naga Kanya's videos out there. Go to the, the channel Naga Kanya, check out some of her vids as well, because she's probably the only one, one of the few that really are exposing it on that level. Others are talking about Illuminati and Rock, Rockefeller, and what's still going on, like in the in the music industry and, you know, the hip-hopism, hip, uh, hip-hop, or whatever, 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 whatever. Let's just go forward right here. Just to sum this up right here, once again, right, um, speaking about Matathias, who was the first of the Maccabees, the Hammers, a priest of great sanctity and energy of character, he began the revolt. He did little more than to gather a band of godly and determined Jews, black Hebrews or black Jews, pledged to free the nation and restore the ancient worship and was succeeded by his son, Judas or Yehuda, Judah, known in history as Maccabeus. Right, so he's the one we get the name Maccabeus, the son of Matathias, right? From the Hebrew word for hammer. He was assisted by four brothers of whom Simon was or is best known. Now it goes on to say right here that in BC 165, Judas or Yehuda, the praise of Yah, the praise of Jah, Rastafari, regained possession of Jerusalem purified and rededicated or livicated, that's where the Hanukkah comes from, the temple, the Mecca, that's the holy place, an event celebrated in the black Jewish feast or black Hebrew or Ethiopian Hebrew feast of the dedication known as Hanukkah, right? So that's the reason, right? That's the reason right there. That's the reason for the season, right? That's the reason for the season, beloved, right? So you see it right there. Now, the struggle with Antiochus and his successor continued. Judas or Yehuda was slain in battle and his brother, Jonathan. So his brother, Jonathan, or his brother, Jonathan, right? His brother, Jonathan, succeeded him, right? His brother, Jonathan, succeeding him. In him, the civil and the priestly the civil, which is the government and the priestly or the state and the church authority were united, B.C. 143. And under Jonathan, Jonathan, his brother Simon and his nephew, John um, 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 Hyrcanus. Now, in the Ethiopian Kadase, there are some liturgies which um, link to John uh, um, um, Hyrcanus, if I'm correct, the um, Hasmonean line of priest rulers or priest kings, right? Priest rulers, rather, was established. You see, at that time, the Davidic kingdom was in the highlands of Ethiopia, according to Yahweh's word and David's prophecy. David had a son named Solomon. Solomon had a son named David. The link with the queen of Sheba, the queen of the south, what Yeshua says, right? No, you know, no um, sign shall be given, right? But Jonah and the queen of the south link with Ethiopia. Right, so we have this reestablishment or this establishment of the priest rulers and under sufferance of other powers, right? They possessed none of the Maccabean virtues. So there were others who continued in that line. So they didn't have these virtues, but this is a significant time because what happened in spirit then is the same thing that happened about 40, 40 or more um, years ago. Now, this would lead forward to a civil war. Right, which was terminated by the Roman conquest of Judea and Jerusalem by um, Pompey in BC 63, who left Hyrcanus, the last of the Hasmoneans, a nominal um, sovereignty. So they had a sovereignty, but it was weakened. Now, Antipater, who was an Indomian or a Edomite, wielding the actual power because he was appointed by Rome. So we see the Esau and the Jacob link there again. Now, B.C. 47, Antipater or Antipater was made procurer of Judea by Julius Caesar and appointed his son, Herod, governor of Galilee. After the murder of Caesar, disorder ensued in Judea 
and Herod fled to Rome. You'll see that in this, in this, if you can check it out, I Claudius, the series I Claudius, very good, give you the kind of background of what was going on in Rome during this biblical time, the New Testament and leading up to the New Testament time. There he was appointed in BC 40, king of the Jews. He was appointed by Rome, right? Speaking of Herod and returning, he conciliated the people by his marriage in BC 38 with uh, Mary Amne, Mary Amne, right? The beautiful granddaughter of um, Hyrcanus. So we even have this intermarriage thing going on. You, you can see that, like, like this is what they're pushing in right now at this present time. And appointed her brother, the Maccabean Aristobulus, the third high priest. Herod was king when Yeshua HaMoshiach was born. Right, and now goes into some more on this, but not getting into all of this right here. We wanted to just establish a, a little more groundation and foundation, like a little more contextualization to, you know, what do we mean when we're speaking about the the Black Maccabees, right, or the Black Maccabean, um, and the Black uh, Boule or the Greek, the Israel and the Greek, the Black Israel and the Black Greek. This war that went on, this kind of kind of a spiritual warfare that went on, which continues, right, even in its covert sense to this very day, right? And this is one of the reasons why lost sheep, by and large, are still blinded, that blindness to who the who is the lion of the tribe of Judah and significance of Haile Selassie I, the elect of God, the king of kings of Ethiopia, and how those of that generation, um, um, they missed, you know, they did not know the day of their visitation. They, besides, you know, there, there's the remnant that did recognize it, even like Adam Clayton Powell, which recognized your majesty. You are the symbol around which, you know, we place our prayers, that link with that lineage, right, of God in Christ at the Vedic throne of the once lost but now found Beta Ethiopian Hebrew Israelite tribe nation and I and I the elect Rastafari. But more on some of the details of this and how this connects with what is going on today, we hope to address furthermore. But just to give some of the deck a a kind of a heads up, you know, as ones are guided and followed and walk in the Holy Spirit, I know that much fruit you know, fruit of overstanding for I and I shall know the truth and the truth shall set I and I free. But there's more notes in the Schofield Study Bible in the in the section between Malachi and um, the last book in the Old Testament and uh, Matthew, the first book in the New Testament. And it's some very, very important um, reading and feeding. So with that being said, brothers and sisters, I hope and pray that... Um, his spirit and his wisdom guides the eye and that you study more and you get to, you know, know more of the truth of this for yourself. And that if my, um, you know, my, my, my little attempt to just bring it forward right now, I think this is so very important. It's, it's, it's one of the, the, um, the missing, the missing keys in I and I story.